right guys it's been a minute since i've given a design update on our kitchen remodel i have been working on it here and there and there's quite a few design updates that i've made so i thought it'd be a good point to kind of pause and share all the updates that i've made so far i'm really happy with how it's looking at the moment so without further ado let's get into it okay i wanted to start off by showing you guys the floor plan of our current space and how I changed the floor plan for the design. Currently, we have our kitchen and dining area separated by this wall, and we have this little back area that has doors to our powder bath, our backyard, and our basement. And then this floor plan to the right is the new floor plan. The cabinetry is, is an L shape along this side, and then I was able to put in a kitchen island at the center. And then I added a wall to create a back corridor to give a separation to the access to the basement, powder bath, the backyard, kind of like the back of house access, which I think will make the kitchen and dining area a little more intimate. So with the floor plan, I started putting in blocks of the cabinetry and millwork, and then I placed in appliances. There's a panel-ready fridge, a panel-ready dishwasher, and then I started uh, making sure the flow of the kitchen felt comfortable and natural. And then over here is the pocket door to the back of house. And then I just blocked in the shape of a kitchen island. And then I started putting in washes of color, like the paint color for the cabinetry, the wood stain for the kitchen island, and the stain for the floors. And then where I am today is... Dun, da, da, da. I put in a bit more of the finer details and I'll take you around of the major updates that I made. Um, I think the most obvious being the kitchen island. I really needed to figure out what the shape of the legs were gonna be. It was kind of difficult because it's an asymmetric shape island. It's open on one side to allow for counter seating. And there's this bulky piece for storage, which I was not willing to compromise on because we need every square inch to serve as storage space. I needed to figure out a way to make this asymmetric shape look balanced. So I tried so many different iterations. I tried doing both sides this straight and monolithic frame. I did more iterations where all the legs were more ornate like this side. And it just felt like I was trying to hide the fact that it was asymmetric and trying to make everything so even. And I realized that I really just needed to lean into the fact that it was asymmetric. I left one side monolithic, the side that's very heavy, it made sense that I just leave it straight. And the side that's floating, I gave it a more ornate design, which is more true to the 1930s colonial home that we live in. So by making the legs different, it kind of made the whole piece feel a little bit more custom and more intentional to the asymmetry. And I'm still looking for the perfect hardware that is in between traditional and a little whimsical. So I'm still on the lookout for that. And if you guys see any hardware that kind of looks like this, let me know. And then on this side where the counter stool is going to be, there's going to be an outlet hidden underneath. And then on this side, I'm putting a rail with S-hooks so I could put tea towels and pot holders, pretty textiles, things like that which will be hidden most of the time when you're looking from the front because it's recessed three inches. But when you're walking around the kitchen island, you'll get glimpses of the brass and pretty textiles. And I wrapped a base around the entire kind of like heavy storage part. And that just kind of like tied in everything together. And then the marble edge gets a pretty little profile. And then right on top of the kitchen island are double pendants. This one's from Waterworks called the Foro Pendant and I love that we have enough space to double it up because it really plays with the double windows that are behind it. And I love these pendants so much because they're kind of like in between very traditional and modern. For example, if you were to put this pendant in a very traditional space, this pendant would look so modern. But then vice versa, if you were to put this pendant in a very modern space, this pendant would act as your traditional piece in that space, 
which I love for the design of the kitchen. And the next big update that I made is this area where it leads to our basement, powder bath, and backyard. Originally, I had put a pocket door closing it off so that we could kind of like slide in and out and um, close it off when we want to. But then my client, aka my husband, it was like, oh, we're gonna close off that space. It's gonna feel so tight and dark and dungeonous. And I was like, it's gonna be fine. We have a ton of light flooding through that corridor from the window from our bathroom. The door that leads to our backyard has a little cutout and that kind of brings in a ton of light. So I was like, it's gonna be totally fine. There's recessed lighting in there too. So it's not gonna feel dark and dungeonous at all. So my husband was like, okay. And of course, whenever my husband says anything, it'll eat into my soul and I'll agonize over it and think about it nonstop. So I knew I had to do something. I knew deep inside he was right. So after agonizing over this corner space here, I came up with a solution of adding a little interior window. I brought out a little marble ledge from the backsplash that goes up so we could put potted plants and lavender herbs and things like that and a pretty little curtain, what's it called, the cafe curtain that I've always wanted anyways. And that'll just make the back corridor feel a lot more open, let even more light in. And then with this opening, I'm taking away the pocket door because we're not able to slide it this way and I don't think we're able to slide it the other way because there's stairwells that lead down into our basement and my gut tells me there's not enough space to slide in a pocket door. I mean, we'll see, but then if we're not able to put a door, I think that's okay because I'm putting in a pretty wallpaper and then dead center to this opening, we're gonna put a cute little sconce with a shade in the matching wallpaper, which is gonna be the, the cutest little moment. So I'm really excited about that. Thank you, Mr. Lin. So taking you into the back corridor and what that looks like is a pretty tight space and tip for wallpapering tight spaces, don't be afraid of wallpapering the ceiling. You would think that keeping a white ceiling, it would make the space feel more bigger, but you're kind of forcing a tight space to look big, which it's not gonna look big. So I think you wanna just like lean into the fact that it's cozy and you won't get that harsh cut line from the wall and the ceiling. So just wallpaper the entire thing. And looking at this side of the corridor, you can see how we have all these strange situations with high ceiling, low ceiling, an angled situation here, and a jet out little portal here, which I used as opportunity to put a little shoe shelf. You know those ones where you pull out and you put like slippers um, vertically? We just need a couple slots to put in our slippers for the backyard. Cause right now we kind of have slippers sitting outside and like sometimes slippers sitting on the floor indoors and it's just not cute. So we just need a little shoe shelf there. And then I put in little shelves here solely for the reason of needing a space to put our fish food containers for our koi fishes. We currently lives on the floor and that also needs a place to live. So we just needed a small narrow shelf for that. And then on the other side, we have that sconce and then some hooks. And eventually I'll probably put in a little gallery wall of art and you know, something so that the hooks kind of become part of the gallery wall. And then we currently have two recessed lights on the ceiling that's not modeled, but it's there. The next big change that I made to the kitchen is on this corner. And just to show you where we were last time, I had all the casing on this side and open shelving on this side, but we all know this little corner in a kitchen is gonna become no man's land. All like the old fruits and like bags of bread, you know, it's all gonna get stuffed there. And open shelvings are so pretty when it's kept pretty. So I split the casing into two, putting the other half on this side 
this side's gonna be all cups, which is perfect because on this side we'll have a filtered water tap next to the sink. And it just makes sense for the cups to all live there. And on this side will be like essential everyday use plates. And I put more storage up here in line with the upper cabinets up here. And then I put on this little strip here so we can hide in like a strip light behind it. And then one outlet that lives out here. So I love that we took care of this no man's land corner, created more storage up there and it kind of frames out this little area much better than what I had previously. And with the rest of the cabinets, the only thing I really did was put in the hardware. This line of hardware is from Classic Brass and it's part of their more traditional collection. So I have them in a combination of knobs, poles and appliance poles. Um, all in polished nickel, which I think is gonna look super clean and classic. Other than that, the other changes that I made was I just added in a little edge finishing to this range hood. And then I added in a wall base. I added in light switches. They're all gonna be on dimmers. This one is, it leads to our sunroom. And then I added in outlets throughout. Seeing another view of the kitchen, looking towards our dining room. We have another light switch out here, which is gonna control most of the lighting in the kitchen. I just need to add one light above the dining table that will be around here. So we have these double pendants up here. We'll have one dining light up here. And then I'll have some cans like hidden underneath here, throughout like all around here. And that'll be plenty of light for this entire space that's actually gonna be more light than we have right now. We have a ton of windows throughout the space that lets in a ton of natural light throughout the day. So any more than this is just kind of excessive and I'd rather put more lighting into like table lamps and floor lamps and more mood lighting like that, which I think will be much prettier and ceiling lights are usually a vibe kill anyway. In my opinion. So I want to show you guys kind of the overall color and material story. Here's the kitchen materials. We have the cabinetry color, the island and backsplash marble, the wall color. We have the floor stain, which is going to be a herringbone pattern and then doing straight planks at the border. And then we have a soapstone countertop, the island dark walnut stain, polished nickel hardware for the cabinetry, and brass hardware for the center island, and the island pendant. And for the back corridor, we have the trims and millwork paint color, the wallpaper, the wall sconce with a shade that's going to be in the same print as the wallpaper. And I didn't really talk about the floor material, but I'm intending to use a porcelain tile, something simple, um, a little bit of a beigey gray with a little bit of movement. So it's going to be able to take a lot of the dirt, the grime, the beatings that a back corridor gets. And then the accessories. Unlike the kitchen where the accessories are going to be very polished and sophisticated, I want the back corridor accessories to feel a little more antique and a little more foraged. So those are the two material boards that I have so far. Um, I'm going to be putting them into a program that I use to specify all the materials and kind of project manage. I still have a lot of materials to look for, like the marble, the soapstone, the porcelain floor for the back corridor. Those don't have specific vendors yet, so I need to start gathering all the materials. So I'll be taking you on that journey. It'll be fun if I take you guys to a stone yard and look for marbles. That would be a fun trip. Okay, so what are my next steps? I think I'm gonna open up all the cabinetry and super design all the interiors of all the cabinets and drawers. It's not a big kitchen, so I need every square inch of the interiors to pretty much do magic tricks. So I think I'm gonna be doing a deep dive into storage solution and I'm gonna be modeling that out in SketchUp so you'll be able to see how I design each and every cabinet and drawer in there. I'm gonna be putting in a coffee station, spice racks and things like that. So we're gonna get really intimate with storage. 
And once I have the interiors of the cabinets all designed, I'll be able to start doing scale drawings and that'll allow me to start getting quotes from cabinet makers, millwork people, the whole gang. So quotes. Ooh. And then I think I'll take you on that journey of interviewing vendors and finding cabinet makers, millwork people and all that. And like I said, I still need to look for all the samples. I have some materials um, solidified, like I know who I'm getting the wallpaper from, that I'm going to use ferro and ball for the paint, but I need to look for marbles for the backsplash, the soapstone countertop. I'd love to get a floor sample, like the exact stain that I want, so I can share it with whoever's going to be doing the floors. I need to look for the porcelain tile for the back corridor. So there's a lot that I still need to source, but this was so fun. I love sharing the design with you guys and getting the design is always like the tip of the iceberg. I really feel like I can start getting the ball rolling a little bit faster. Um, let me know if there's anything else you are curious about that I can share with you. See you on the next update.